Good morning, everybody. It's the pollinator. Wakanda forever. Um, I'm going to make, I made two videos this morning. And uh, this one I wanted to make and not uh, be about gender cat. But, oh my God, there is so much going on in this country right now. It's like <clears throat> smoke and mirrors. You know, I, um, <clears throat> yeah, while they're blowing smoke in the front ground, in the foreground, it's like, it's like this country, uh, the people who are the most afraid of the times and that they're changing, um, it's like they, you know, light one of those smoke bombs, throw it out there while everybody is paying attention to the smoke and not being able to see in that smoke is when they're doing all of their bullshit in the background and trying to manipulate things and push things around and secure themselves in society. In other words, the the gap between the rich and the poor is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, um, and which is intentional. It's very strategic in trying to make sure by the year 2043 comes around um, that the, that that these power hungry, um, control hungry, no matter who they hurt hungry, people will be so far ahead that nobody will, uh, well, evidently be able to do anything um, about the power and the control that they have over uh, uh, people who don't look like them in Washington, D.C. The government is trying to com take complete and total domination of this country and allowing businesses, politicians, and everybody else to, to put as big a gap um, between average ordinary Americans and them. And then the ones caught in between, they're just caught in between. They think, you know, regardless of the destruction and the division and all the hatred and all that going on in this country that somehow they're gonna come out ahead on the they're gonna come out on, on ahead when all is said and done which is exactly not what's happening I mean look at this shutdown in the government and who is hurting now all these people who are his base 45's base um, are realizing oh shit he doesn't really care about us well, a lot of us could have told you that a long time ago, that they're just using you. Um, to, 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 you were a means to an end for them. And, you know, they don't give a flying crap about you. Um, I mean, look at everything some of these dead beat politicians are saying about the fact that people aren't getting paid for a living that the government is shut down over this bullying politics over that stupid ass wall that ain't gonna do shit. They need to be taking that money and pumping it back into the people, back into things that need to happen in this country. But instead, you know, 45 and his minions, his dead brain minions are, they just, it's a game to them because their income is secured. They're a bunch of rich, spoiled people who um, they don't care. They could care less. And they're saying so. Um, on uh, national TV, through mainstream media and media. I don't watch mainstream media. I'm watching a guy named Roland Martin uh, for much of my news and some other people. Um, I'm very, very much trying to stay away from Hotep type people because they are not our allies. Um, they're, just, they're just trying to make a big bang and a big splash and a lot of noise in a certain aspect of the black community and just ignoring everybody else except they're the kind of people who think like them. In other words, um, to me, they're just the opposite end of the same coin of uh, white supremacy. Um, their thing is black supremacy, but only certain blacks can be supreme. And, the, and they don't even care that they're sounding ignorant as hell when it comes to certain kinds of black people in the United States or worldwide for that matter. They don't, they, don't, they don't care because they've got this base of people who believe everything that comes out of their mouth and all else be damned. Um, yeah, they're, they're just sounding like white people with black skin. 
but the hatred is still very much there. So, you know, I'm doing what I'm going to do about that, um, which is to try to erase those divisions. You know, the, the phrase divide and conquer is the very thing that these Hotep black people are doing. They're just doing it in a different fashion with different words on it, firing people up, getting them real hyper angry, um, hyper hate, hateful. No, nah, none of us like what is going on here. And it's very, very easy to hate people in the process of what we see going on right now. But the thing, but here's the thing, and here's the thing. I caught myself for a change. I, I made a, a video just a bit back talking about um, why it's important to try to exchange the word but with and. Okay, so, and, again, they're just, anger is an emotion that blows a lot of smoke up into the, your brain, into our brains. And it's, it's just so easy to get stuck in that place. It's so easy to hate the haters. Or have a very strange way of ignoring them, but you're not really ignoring them. You know, you're, you're, you're focused on what you're focused on, but then you're looking out one eye, side eyeing them. Like, um, yeah, you're, you're side eyeing the haters and using them to uh, promote your channels, to promote your business or whatnot, because especially on uh, YouTube, it, it don't matter if, if a view is a view is a view, even if they're a hater or a supporter or follower of your your uh, YouTube channel. So, you know, and, oh, and I want to remind people that um, in, in order for, to get visibility around this particular platform called YouTube, uh, people have to subscribe and click this bell that gives you notifications of when uploads occur for any uh, content creator of YouTube. And then, you know, hit that thumbs up. The thumbs up does something to, um, to somehow push your uh, channels and your videos out more on YouTube. So my content, yes, I would very much like for people to do that to go ahead and click that subscribe button go ahead and click the bell and click that thumbs up for me um i am not a full-time youtube content creator i i make videos as i feel like making them when i'm inspired to make them uh so i don't have a regular schedule even though I, you know ha that has been a request but the problem is with these requests that if they're not paying me to do that, I'm not gonna do it. I have to make a living too. And I happen to believe that the content that I create is valuable, even though my numbers aren't big. Um, and there is a link always in the description of all of these videos. There is a PayPal link uh, pointed to this channel, or for this channel, that you can go down into the description and actually see. And, you know, throw up other a few dollars. You know, it, it couldn't hurt. And eventually I'm going to start making a habit of saying that in every video. That that link is there and that you need to go into the description of the video to see it. Otherwise, there there is down here in this corner. And I may be pointing in the wrong direction here. But down in this corner, there is a, a little, uh, in white lettering, a subscribe button. So that you can click that instead of running around looking for the subscribe button um you can also click that to subscribe so i just wanted to make a a quick uh video that you know things are getting real interesting in the united states and um you know but i'm doing i'm doing my part to try to stay out of the melee of all of the emotions that all of this stuff is causing people all the anxiety it's causing. Um, God, them shutting down the government is causing just the worst domino effect this nation has ever faced for this long period of time. 
um, you know, and it, it, the last time it happened, it wasn't as expensive to live uh, in the U.S. And now it is more expensive to live, and the monopolies are making sure to make everything more and more expensive while, you know, whatever little raises and increases in promotions and cost of living increases that you get cannot keep up with the times. That is how they're making that gap bigger and bigger and get bigger between the rich and the poor. That is the aim, is the eventually that's all there will be, is the rich and the poor, and the rich will be dominating the poor. Um... And the, and the ones in between, I don't even know. You know, I started seeing uh, the middle class disappearing probably 20 years ago. I started seeing that. And I kept asking people, uh, don't you guys see what's going on here? And, and, and people go, they're just asleep. People are asleep. Maybe they're numbing out. Um, because they can't really face what's really the reality of re really what's going on. Uh, the worldwide domination of um, Caucasians and biz big business and government and politics. People so can't handle it that they're just numbing their brain out to the point where they're in just this severe denial of what, what's really happening. So so that nobody's gonna be prepared if shit hits the fan instead of us being able to turn this country around given the mess uh, 45 and his minions are making up in Washington that is blowing all across every aspect of every society of every uh, marginalized person uh, in this country. So, you know, I've was listening to, uh, I try to catch Roland Martin's videos as much as I can, and yesterday was lit. I mean, he put down so many facts, and the people on his panel were putting down so many facts about what is going on right now that it was just, it was a thing to see. And, you know, part of the divide and conquer of this, of the media, is to bombard everybody with so many lives and so many videos and so many going on that people are having a hard time knowing what's really, really, really great content and what isn't. So they're dividing. People are being divided and scattered like, you know, like bugs. Um, have you running over here? Have you run over there? Have you run over here? Have you, and so that you can't get your information from uh, legitimate sources. Um, but I decided to narrow that crap down and stop watching some things and pay more close attention to um, what looks more like uh, common sense to me than things that are not common sense at all or people just playing. You know, right now is just not the time to play. You can have fun out there and I have been having a riot. I had so much fun this morning, it should be illegal too. Um, I, I got into, you know, I, I sometimes I eat really early in the morning before, every, you know, before everybody shows up and after everybody leaves the night before. And then I end up in, in these really crazy, fun conversation with uh, customers and employees of the restaurant. And this morning was so much fun. So there are... There's a time for fun and there's a time to work. Whether you work a job, whether you have a career, or whether you are working on making a difference in this conversation called life on this planet. There's a time for all of it and I just slip in fun as I'm doing the work. Um, because I know there's... A, mm, somebody asked me and I don't exactly remember who or when, it was within the last week, um, asked me if there was such thing as too much play, people playing. What would I tell the youth of America if I could get to every one of them? And is there such thing as too much playing when you're growing up? And my answer to that was simply, Yes, you, you, children need to be children.
people need to allow children to be children, but at the same time, they need to be teaching them what they need to know later in life. So there is a time for play, which, you know, the younger you are, the more that play is, and the older they get, the less and less and less and less of that there will be when you're trying to educate your the young, educate your children on what it is to be black in America, what it is, you know, what parts of history to pay attention to, what parts of history are bullshit, um, what parts are going to empower you, and which parts of society are going to disempower you. That is the name of the game, and they need to catch them young before they become teenagers and end up, you know, how, how many of us really do remember what we were like as teenagers? I know I was out of control, didn't know shit, thought I knew everything. I know that's the way that I was when I was a teenager. I, you know, rebellious, all those things that a lot of teenagers are are like when they're, uh, you know, when they become teenagers, I was. And, you know, I figured out ways around my parents' direction and order and stuff like that. And I was just free-flowing out there because, um, yeah, because, you know, I was growing up, but I didn't have the only solid foundation I had about who I am was by my mother. My mother raised us, me and my sister. Uh, my dad was out there making a very, very great living for us. And at the same time, you know, he didn't, he was making his statement and his, uh, the way that he could make a difference as a professional athlete. He was doing that all year and only was home like four or five months, if that, out of the year. Because sometimes when he came back, uh, he and my mom immediately got on a plane and got called somewhere else. Like one time uh, they got to go to Japan. Oh, I was so envious. I wanted to go with them, but I was in school and I don't know who sat us, who babysat us while they were in Japan. But oftentimes that was the way my father's schedule was. And back then, um, the athletes had to tr train, continue to train all year, even though they weren't playing ball. Uh, on the off season, they had to keep themselves fit. I don't know if that's true anymore. That may be true. That's not a requirement anymore, but the, the really, really talented and great athletes will do that anyway. Nobody has to tell them to do that. But, so my father, but, there I went again, and my father did play a lot of winter ball. I got to go to Venezuela, uh, Caracas, uh, Puerto Rico, I think the Dominican Republic, and definitely the um, Caribbean, the West Indies. I got to go down there, uh, I think during my winter break and spend time uh, out, outside this country while he was keeping himself fit during the winter. I say all that to say that, um, I say all that because I forgot why I said all that. <laughs> oh my God. Um, yeah, I lost my train of thought again. Oh, man. You know, um, anyway, it had something to do with my childhood. Oh, well, yeah, okay, so I say all that to say that my mom was the instrumental person in my life, um, in me and my sister's life, and... And she was a stay-at-home mom, and, and, and she traveled a lot to be with him uh, during the season and during the off-season. So she basically had the big thumb to do with raising us. And the influence she had over me, I was so observant as a child that I was watching everything. I was watching the civil rights movement through her eyes. I was watching it all through her actions. I was watching it through her actions, through my dad's actions, what he was doing uh, for black ball players on the team. He he was on through his throughout his career, but really, you know, my mom had a big hand to do with what I was saying directly. And so, so yeah, I got raised during that movement, which is different than seeing it as a young person right now who never experienced that the greatness that transformed the world back in the 1960s. It's just different reading about it, 
person experiencing it. And what I also find interesting about young people is they do not seek us out to find this, find out what it was like. It's almost like they're timid and afraid to really know uh, what that was like and what that was all about through the eyes of their elders. The respect of elders has gone this away. I've experienced it on the fucker book platform where uh, once people found out my age, all of a sudden I was called a senior citizen and spat at, and those people did not want to know one goddamn thing uh, about how to live life, um, how to take pick any of my wisdom out. They just wanted to make fun of me, and I was just like, you know what? That's going to hurt them, not me. Uh, that they would rather... Um, you know, pick me apart then to learn anything about what life is really about. See, when I was young, I loved hanging out with older people because they were wiser than I. And I knew they had something to offer, even though I was rebellious. Yes, I was, but I still had my eye on, I respected my elders. I never uh, cursed at them. I ne None of the things that happened when, as I got older, was I about when I was their age. And that's part of divide and conquer, too, is keep our young super ignorant. Keep them so high they can't think straight. Um, keep them playing well into their 20s and 30s and 40s. You know, keep people so distracted. They're, they're not paying attention to the power and the numbers that they have. They're not paying attention to what they can do as young people. Well, not enough of them. Even though right now there is a lot of stirring going on. There, there, there is. There is an undercurrent that's happening right now that is full of young people who are looking at this and going, hmm, maybe we should take a look at what happened during the Civil Rights Movement. Because look, there's only been two times in the history of this fucking world that something so transformational actually happened. I forgot the first one. I think... Yeah, I forgot the first one, but the second one was the Civil Rights Movement. And yes, the government murdered all the leaders. It was a big-ass threat to the establishment, to white supremacy. And so they took everybody out that was a threat to that. And now, people are starting to come up and change their mentality to suit the times instead of being asleep like, like they have been since the civil rights movement, since the 1960s. People are starting to have the kind of awareness that is scaring uh, the establishment so badly that that's why they're grabbing power and control and ignoring everybody and not caring about anybody because they're afraid of that. They're afraid when the demographics change in the United States and make sure that they're as far ahead as possible when that happens. Even if they're not alive when it happens, they're setting it up so that their children and their children's children can have the kind of control and power that keeps white supremacy alive. Um, even people that I admire uh, who are white, are they're kind of asleep too and probably wondering Hmm, where do I fit into what's going on here? And I can tell you right now, some of the most woke white people I know are asleep too. Because they're scared as well. But you see, as long as they don't say that out loud, nobody can deal with it, right? Uh, you know, their friends, their family, their closest, uh, their business associates, their employer, their whoever, whoever, whoever is around them in their inner circle won't challenge uh, their thinking or challenge uh, really where they fit into all of this hoopla going on in the United States. They can, you know, one of the definitions of privilege is they don't have to fucking think about that stuff. They walk around as though they're not concerned about what's going to happen when really they are. Their silence says it all. I keep putting that in all of my posts on that platform. Silence is consent. And I mean it. If you are silent about what's going on, you're consenting to it. If you're not fighting back, 
you're consenting to it. If you're not saying anything against what's going on, you're consenting to it. You can't stand in the middle and say, well, I'm not consenting to it, but it's happening and I'm not contributing. No, your silence is consenting to it. Whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you're Native American, whether you're Asian, whether you're Hispanic, all the huffing and puffing in the world isn't making you, to me, isn't making you look like you're not being silent. If you're not doing the right kinds of things, if you're not challenging your local government, if you're not, if all you're doing is yep, 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 yepping, and that's all you're doing, you're being silent. You're just being loudly silent, but you're still consenting to what's going on if you don't resist what's going on. That's the key. What are you doing to resist the resistance? What are you doing to, to, I hate to say choose a side, but you have to choose a side. You either choose what, you either choose what's going on, it's okay to go on because it's not touching you directly or later on in life it will. And when it does, you ain't gonna be happy because you sat there silent while they were ramping up to squash you like they're trying to squash everybody else. <laughs> Just remember, the pollinator said it. You know, when I'm long gone, this will still be out there saying, mm -mm. silence is consent. With that, I'm going to tune out for the weekend. I have a lot going on. Uh, there's going to be a live this Sunday where uh, some trans men and myself as the host is going to be talking about manhood and what that means to us, what that has meant to us when we went into transitioning uh, from female to male. And you know, I'm hoping that's, that's going to go really well. I also have to be somewhere else before that happens and I have to leave there and run back home and start that live so that's going to be a busy day and it is the two year I don't know what you call death anniversary or the anniversaries but it, it that day two years ago I lost my sister um, and so I don't even know how I'm going to feel that day I didn't even realize that that I had created plans to make this live before I realized that that was her anniversary of her death, of her passing. Um, I didn't realize that until I had got the group together and I, I start talking about, um, yeah, I start talking about what we were going to discuss on Sunday. And then my um, a, a family member who's been nursing a plant that she made uh, I'm sorry, that she has been growing and named that plant, my sister's name, sent me a, a picture of the plant. And that's when it dawned on me, oh my God, the day of the live is the anniversary of my sister's passing. So I hope I don't get real emotional over there that day. Um, it could happen and if it does, I'm not going to be concerned about that. You know, people will see uh, I'm pretty transparent and, and I'm authentic in the things that I do put out here. Not always do I talk in intricate detail about what I'm feeling or what I'm going through, but, you know, I'll, I'll mention things and then to my inner circle, they'll know a lot more about what I'm talking about than what I put out here on YouTube. I'm not put, I'm not sticking myself out there to have pop shots taken at me uh, about who I am, how I am, where I'm coming from, any of that, because I don't, I don't, I frankly don't care. <laughs> I only care about people in my inner circle. And I care about people who are on the fringes that have my back, that aren't necessarily in my inner circle, but they're, uh, they've got my back. And so those people I do talk to, they do know a little bit more about how I think and what I'm feeling and things like that. And then others don't. Oh well, maybe I'll get real freaking, um, you know, maybe I'll say more as I feel like saying more. Um, 
in detail about who I am and what makes me tick and and all that stuff. You can pretty much tell, you know, that I'm a live wire and that I'm pretty dynamic and um but God, if you had any idea what's going on in my life right now, you'd wonder how the heck is he doing this? All of what he's doing and all these stands he's taking, you'd wonder why. And for me, the one word is God. When I plug into my source, I get boundless energy, boundless power, boundless um, possibilities. When I plug in. When I'm not plugged in, yeah, I'm running around like everybody else and kind of losing it. But when I do plug in, I'm plugged in. And, you know, my God gives me all of what I need. I don't always get what I want, but I definitely get what I need. So, everybody have a an awesome weekend. Um, and I really mean that from the bottom of my heart. That this is the time for humanity to uplift humanity because times are tough right now for many of us for all of us for most of us maybe not those clowns in Washington but everywhere else life is tough so only the strong will survive to that I say namaste and peace out